Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing, as well as analysing, tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be kicking this video off with several pieces of AMD news. If you prefer the written word, then you can, of course, find an article linked in the description of this video, which will go through most of the AMD stuff. We're going to be starting things out, though, with AMD confirming that Zen 5 is already in design. This was uh, during AMD's Epic Horizon event, which AMD have just put on YouTube if you want to check it out. It's quite a long event, but wait, well worth watching, excuse me. And Mark Papermaster confirmed that the company's engineers were currently in the design phase of the Zen 5 CPU architecture. This is obviously a testament to AMD's leapfrogging approach for design. So basically... AMD have several teams of engineers, each working on different generations of Zen. The idea here is that they all have a common goal, in other words, to hit a specific performance target within X number of years, but team, let's call them A, B, and C, let's say as team A is finishing the design and testing of Zen 3, they can give insight and kind of the issues they had to team B and C, and all of that can then be... Um, and then all of that can come together to form a greater whole. So this isn't the first time we've actually heard of Zen 5. Uh, earlier this year, an engineer at AMD actually confirmed it as a list of accomplishments on his LinkedIn profile. Oopsie! We don't know a whole lot about Zen 5, even after this announcement by Mark Papermaster at Epic Horizon. We are pretty certain it's going to be produced on TSMC's 5NM process, and we are also pretty certain it's going to uh, be using new generation of memory uh, because we know that Zen 3 will be the final series of CPUs supporting uh, DDR4 because uh, back in uh, 2017, of course, AMD promised uh, forward slash backwards compatibility for its server lineup and mainstream lineup. And then several folks at AMD have said that the Zen 3 CPUs and their Ryzen 4000 counterparts, as well as the server CPUs Milan, will be the final CPUs that support uh, DDR4. So, anyway, Zen 3 is going to be quite a send off according to my sources. It's going to have around 8% IPC gain over the Zen 2 architecture, along with uh, at a clock frequency bump as well. The engineering samples of Zen 3 is around 100 to 200 megahertz higher than Zen 2. And, of course, AMD have also given some official details of the Zen 3 architecture as well. Also, after discussion of Zen 5, AMD wheeled out TSMC's Godfrey Cheng, who's actually the head of global marketing at TSMC. And his job on stage was, well, one, to push the fact that TSMC were awesome, and the second thing was to speak on AMD's behalf and to... Uh, ensure that people had confidence that TSMC could hit the demands that AMD had for the manufacturing of their various products. In raw aggregate capacity, we are actually three times the capacity of our next nearest foundry competitor. This means that we have approximately 12 million 12-inch 12 equivalent wafers in terms of raw capacity, said, he said. He then went on to state that the uh, N7 node had been extremely successful and that they'd actually been able to ramp up production extremely quickly, the fastest in any node in TSMC's own history. But moving on to AMD's CPUs themselves, November is going to be a very big month for the company because we're going to be seeing the launch, finally, of the Ryzen 9 3950X, we'll go into some benchmarks of that CPU in just a moment, plus also the launch of the third generation Threadripper parts. Videocards.com have actually got in their hands on some confidential documents which actually provide insight into AMD's launch plans for the third generation Threadripper. So it's going to start in November that we'll see both the Threadripper 3960X and the 3970X be revealed on the 5th. However, we're going to wait until the 19th for both reviews and the sales of the CPU. So that's right, it, from these documents anyway, 
you're going to be able to buy the CPUs on the same date that the reviews go live. So at least the reviews aren't a little bit later or anything like that. So it, it's good that you can kind of order uh, the CPU based upon the benchmarks that we're going to be seeing. Furthermore, we have, of course, seen a day or so ago I covered the news that the uh, Threadripper 3960X name had uh, been leaked thanks to an Ashes of the Singularity benchmark entry, and that was a 24-core CPU. So we don't know what the core count is for the 3970X. Most likely that would be the 32-core SKU, uh, we've actually seen engineering sample variants of this CPU, and of course it's also been teased uh, recently by an Arctic cooler, as well as the 64-core variant Threadripper as well. Speaking of which, there is also the Threadripper 3990X. Now, this CPU is going to purely be teased at the same time as the other CPUs are announced but it's only going to have its core count teased. It's not going to have any specifications announced. The full specifications, review, and availability is not going to be revealed until January, although we don't have a date there. And also there's another question, and that is of the motherboards. So the TRX40 motherboards will be announced and reviewed at the same dates as the CPUs, so the 5th of November and November 19th, respectively. But there has also been, of course, multiple reports of the TRX-80 motherboards, and these were not mentioned in this specific document. There's a couple of potentials there, then. The first is that these motherboards don't exist, uh, the second is that AMD are holding back the launch, and the third option is that we, they will be announced slash become available, uh, let's say, at the same time as the 3990X. I've personally heard that AMD are planning to do two versions of Threadripper, but whether that's the 3990X or whether this is something entirely different, we're not certain. Uh, so th apparently the professional version is going to have uh, higher core counts, potentially uh, better I.O. And there's another thing that's missing from the data that uh, videocards.com obtained, and that is the pricing. Considering that the 3950X isn't cheap, you're looking at around 750 US dollars or your regional equivalent, we can probably presume that the 3960X is going to be, you know, around the 1000 mark, but obviously we're going to have to wait and see. And we also have some performance information as well, a bit early, for the 3950X. The first results come from WCCF Tech, who claim to have been sent results of the CPU running at, quote, stock, uh, out of quotes. This basically means that there wasn't any overclocking done or tweaking done to the CPU. We don't have full system specifications of this CPU, unfortunately. But what they have said is that the Ryzen 9 3950X scores 8,789 points in Cinebench R20. To put this into some context, the first generation Threadripper flagship, the 1950X, scores 6,670 points, so around 2,000 points difference there. And in terms of points, it's also basically neck and neck with Intel's HEDT current flagship, the i9-9980XE, which is also extremely impressive. One thing that was mentioned, however, is that this was all done via the stock Wraith cooler. Apparently, during all core workloads, the CPU was hitting around 3.9 GHz, so say around, of course, because the clock frequency fluctuates, but during single core workloads, it was hitting up to 4.7 gigahertz. So this obviously stomps the first generation of Threadripper with this specific workload, and it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with games, uh, given the higher clock frequency we're seeing with uh, just a couple of cores active. But that's not the end of the leaks, because we also have results thanks to the Geekbench database. And there's actually two scores here. One is for a B450 motherboard, and the second of which is for an Asus Prime X570 motherboard. 
So both of these results are running with memory at 3600 MHz. The difference between memory configurations, however, is that the B450 motherboard is only loaded with 16 gigabytes of memory compared to the um, X570 motherboard, which had uh, 64 gigabytes of memory. But honestly, that's not really a big deal. It's Geekbench. It doesn't really require a whole bunch of RAM anyway. Anywho, the performance difference here is quite obvious. Uh, with the multi-core score up first, you're looking at 11,140 for the B450 result, and 15,401 for the X570 result. Meanwhile, single core score is 1,314 versus 1,276. You can argue that the single core score is probably margin of error stuff, based upon what's loaded in the background or other small things here or there. However, the multi-core score is a pretty big difference so it's going to be really interesting to see what's going on there it could be bios related i personally would be unsurprised if it is bios related that's causing that so we're going to have to wait uh, for, for these cpus to launch to see exactly what's going on maybe uh, it wasn't boosting correctly or you know something else was going on with the b450 results just a couple of news stories left. The final piece of AMD news is the Ryzen 7 3750X. I'm going to call this the odd duck in the Ryzen 3000 lineup. I personally believe that the 3800X is probably the worst value CPU in the Ryzen 3000 lineup. There are some arguments for it. It does have higher clock frequency. But... Recently, the 3750X was discovered in an official document on the company's website. This was actually discovered by Kamichi on Twitter, and then Tom'sHardware.com did a bit more due diligence. Now, this CPU is odd because it's 105 watts, and we know that the 3700X is, of course, 65 watts, and the 3800X is 105 watts. And if you look at the clock frequency difference between those two chips, 3.6 GHz and 4.4 GHz for the base and boost frequencies respectively, versus 3.9 and 4.5, once again, for the base and boost frequencies respectively. So that makes you wonder what the heck this CPU is. There's a rumor floating around that it has an additional... Uh, chiplet enabled. It has uh, therefore 64 megabytes of level 3 cache, but it still is only an 8 core CPU. There's a couple of things with that. First of all, this is unsubstantiated. There's no evidence that this is actually true. It's just a rumor. And the second thing is that even if it is true and it is an 8 core CPU with 64 megabytes of level 3 cache, I don't really know what the benefits of that would be necessarily. Yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see exactly what happens in terms of the benchmarks to see how well that would actually perform. It's potentially possible that this CPU never sees the light of day. Maybe OEMs uh, are requesting this CPU as kind of like a special edition version or something like that. And it's going to be very interesting to see if it does come to retail what the price is going to be. I'm going to assume it's going to be around the 350 US dollar mark, 360 at the very most. Uh, yeah, I don't see AMD replacing the 3800 uh, with this CPU, so it looks like they may coexist. Moving away from AMD news, and we're going to discuss the i9-9900KS, because several folks have managed to get hold of this CPU, Indeed, someone on Reddit managed to hit 5.2 GHz for an overclock. But Tom's Hardware have got an exclusive with a pre-production model, and have been putting it through its paces and doing lots of testing. And the results here are quite interesting, but not necessarily for the clock frequency stuff. So, the 9900K and the 9900KS on paper look very similar to one another, and it's true. There's no additional cores here, it has the same memory frequency support, and blah 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 blah. They're both produced on the 14nm stepping even. 
But one thing that is different is that the um, 9900K has the P0 stepping, whereas the 9900KS has the R0 stepping. So, the rumour has it that there were some hardware fixes implemented in the silicon for the KS. This is basically for fallout, meltdown, blah, blah, blah. And so, there was the obvious question, what happens if you take the KS versus the K and you run them at the same clock frequency? Well, the answer is that there is some IPC retro uh, regression when you're running um, the 9900KS. So the testing methodology here was apparently they're running the CPU at 3 GHz. All of the rest of the system specifications, of course, remained consistent. So memory timings, clock frequencies, and uh, sorry, uh, memory timings and clock frequencies. And then what they did is run a variety of different benchmarks. And most of the time, the difference was quite small, like within half a percent. But other times it was larger, around 5%, which is obviously pretty big. Now, it's potentially possible, according to uh, Mr. Alcorn, who did the testing, that it could be the firmware, the BIOS, basically, of the motherboard. Maybe it's just not um, functioning correctly. It's also possible because it's, quote, pre-production, end quote, variant of the chips that could also be doing it. However, he believes that this is most likely not the case, and it is actually the hardware mitigations that are causing the problem. So, I mean, this also, to me anyway, brings up questions of what we're going to be seeing with uh, Comet Lake when it launches. Because obviously, Comet Lake is also going to be based on the Skylake X, uh, sorry, Skylake architecture. And the rumour has it that they will also have the hardware mitigations built in. So it makes you wonder, well, if you have a Comet Lake CPU and you do much the same testing here with same core count, same clock frequency, will you actually get lower performance with Comet Lake versus what you would get with um, with uh, Coffee Lake? And of course, it's good that the hardware, um, the hardware mitigations are in, hardware security mitigations are in, but it's kind of funny that... In some of these tests, the extra couple of hundred megahertz you get is actually negated almost because of the uh, regression in IPC. So it just, yeah, it's just one of those really bizarre situations. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then the normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.